Are you serious? Are you serious? Oh, it's getting crazier and crazier and crazier. It must be Halloween. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. This is the coming apocalypse, and uh, we're in the end times. As a matter of fact, tonight, Halloween, we're having a special, a Halloween special called In the Dark. And um, it's a webinar. You can you can get your ticket for it at my website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. And just uh, right in the center of the, when you go to my website, it'll say Halloween special. Boom, click it, get your ticket real easy, and uh, you'll be ready to roll for tonight. We'll be sending back the emails of every person that gets a ticket. We'll be sending you your email of this webinar, your own private email, and you'll be able to watch it. It's got five presentations, one on the essence of evil and the origins of Halloween, the Demons of October 7th, The Bio of Aleister Crowley, and The Epitome of Evil. Well, myself, Heidi Begley, and my son Bart Begley put this together. We did one last year. It was very, very well received. People learned a lot about this particular high satanic ritual day, uh, satanic worship, okay? Satanic worship, no doubt about that. Halloween. Halloween. So get your tickets tonight. Go right now at our website and get them. Or you can call the number, uh, which is uh, 765 414, and that uh, is 2230. Here, I'll just throw that up there for you. There you go. Get your webinar tickets now. 765 414 2230. And you can call and get your ticket, and then that way you'll be ready to roll. All right, now, guys, I'm going to um, Hamas. Okay, and now he calls at the wrong time. Sorry about that. Uh, Hamas, there's been a massive explosion, a massive explosion that has happened, Okay. And uh, we got breaking news on this. And I want to share this with you. Uh, very significant information has happened. Uh, the reports first came in. Uh, first of all, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has revitalized and said the Palestinian Authority should take over Gaza after this war. So he's saying after Hamas is gotten rid of, then the Palestinian Authority from over there in Ramallah, that they should take over this uh, the Gaza area, okay? So uh, that's interesting. So, again, we're changing the goalpost every time you turn around. Now, the Israel Defense Forces uh, 25 minutes ago just said that the ground troops took control of Hamas military stronghold in the northern part of the Gaza Strip and killed some 50 terrorists during the operations today. Huge, huge victory for the IDF. The IDF says the infantry forces and tanks led by the uh, Javadi Brigade seized the compound uh, which is used by Hamas, uh, 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 one of their battalions. The complex includes tunnels and rocket launching positions as well as weapon storage sites, according to the IDF. The uh, troops clashed with Hamas in the compound, killing numerous terrorists and then the Air Force sites and other operatives in the area. Um I mean, while they were fighting these terrorists and killing numerous terrorists, the Air Force of the IDF then struck sites and other operatives in the area. After capturing the site, the troops located and later destroyed the entrance to the tunnels and the weapons. It adds that intelligence information was also obtained from the compound. And according to the IDF, some 50 Hamas terrorists were killed by Israeli forces in the Gaza Strip today. So, uh, but then, just now coming in, 19 minutes ago, a 
According to reports, the IDF has not only killed 50 terrorists, but they killed the top Hamas commander. As the tunnels, the collapsed terror tunnels are falling. On this Halloween, the Israeli Defense Forces says it has killed the commander of Hamas, Central Battalion, Ibrahim Barre, in an airstrike in the Gaza Strip a short while ago. The military said the strike killed Barari and several other terrorists and caused underground terror tunnels to collapse, bringing down several nearby buildings when these tunnels collapsed. Palestinian reports are saying at least 50 were killed in that strike. Yeah, and they were all Hamas. This was a Hamas uh, nest, okay, if you will. It was a battalion. And according to the IDF, uh, the one of the top Hamas commanders responsible for directing the members of the terror group elite uh, forces uh, that helped invade Israel on October 7th was also was killed. One of the top guys who was leading the directive on the assault on Israel on October 7th, he has been killed. The IDF says that the airstrike was part of a wide-scale strike on Hamas operatives and infrastructure belonging to the terror group's battalion, Central Depa- Battalion. According to the IDF, the uh, battalion took control of several civilian buildings in the area and had set up shop there. The strike damages Hamas's com- command and control in the area, as well as its ability to wreak military activity against IDF soldiers operating throughout the Gaza Strip, the Army says in a statement. It says numerous terrorists were killed and in this underground terror infrastructure embedded beneath the buildings used by the terrorists. Also, when you do that, it, it collapses the building above it. The IDF says it also reiterates its call to the residents of the area to please move south for their safety. Of course, we do not want any of the uh, um, we don't want any of these folks, innocent civilians, uh, caught in the crosshairs and the crossfire. What's going on now? Already four minutes ago, Egypt and Jordan are condemning Israel's strike, uh, saying the Egyptians and the Jordanian foreign ministers have issued statements condemning Israel for these strikes uh, in northern Gaza, which killed 50 Palestinians. Uh, Egypt describes the airstrikes as inhumane and as a blatant violation, they said, of international law. And they warns of the consequences of indiscriminate attacks on civilians in and around hospitals where they seek refuge. Cairo also calls on the international community to intervene to stop the Israeli attacks <coughs> and provide humanitarian aid to the Gazans. Now, I just said earlier today, 157 trucks have been delivered into Gaza after they were inspected by Israel. 13 of them this morning went in from Egypt on into Gaza. But Jordan also condemned the Israeli attack in the strongest terms, holding Israel responsible for this latest development. Amman, Jordan, also condemned the ongoing escalation in the West Bank and settlers' violence against the uh, Palestinians. Hamas said at least 50 people were killed and some 150 injured. These figures could not be independently verified by the Associated Press or anyone else. Uh, According to video footage from the scene, appeared to show at least 47 bodies recovered from the rubble after the strike hit several houses in the camp. Israel says the strike killed the top Hamas commander and numerous terrorists and that the collapse of the underground terror tunnels also brought down nearby buildings. So it sounds like, once again, the propaganda war is continuing to go on. So Israel is reporting that they killed the top Hamas commander and 50 terrorists, while the Egypt and Jordan are condemning Israel, saying that they killed 50 Palestinians, and they are condemning them with the strongest terms, okay? 
So that's some of the uh, information going on here. Uh, very significant. Uh, very, very, very significant development taking place. Uh, and so, wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Um, the question is, is this, do people finally believe me that we're in Ezekiel, excuse me, uh, Psalms 83, where at least there is a confederacy of nations that start condemning Israel and even start calling for the destruction of Israel, wiping out the nation of Israel. We're already hearing that from the Iranians, and we're, and we're already hearing the president of Turkey say that Israel is guilty of war crimes. We're already now seeing condemnation from the United Nations, and even a resolution was attempted to be passed. We also see Jordan and per the president of Egypt now condemning the fighting going on in Gaza. Um, the, the, we, we, you know, we know we're seeing protesting going on in the streets of the United States and around the world, especially on U.S. college campuses where it is being uh, constantly um, discussed and, and, and protested against and literally... Uh, it's just unbelievable the things that are going on. But anyway, uh, it's quite interesting what's taking place here uh, in these end times. Now, uh, the Bible told us that we're going to see wars and rumors of wars, but this is different. Wars and rumors of wars, we could talk about North Korea threatening you know, Japan or South Korea. We could talk about China threatening you know, uh, Taiwan. Uh, we could talk about Russia invading Ukraine. We could talk about uh, Russia threatening Poland. And we could talk about China threatening anybody and everybody. We can, we can talk about these wars and rumors of wars certainly going on. And we can talk about the earthquakes. Even today, a 6.7 hit Chile. And a 6.5 hit Fiji. Uh, we could talk about... Uh, the earthquakes of this year, the killer quakes of this year. Uh, you know, 50,000 people killed in Turkey. Uh, 3,000 in Afghanistan in an earthquake. 3,000 uh, in Morocco in an earthquake. 11,000 killed from a storm, a cyclone storm that formed in the in the Mediterranean and crashed into Libya and the flooding and the landslides killed 11,000 and Yemen firing rockets at Israel today Hezbollah in southern Lebanon firing rockets at Israel today rockets have been fired by the Syrians over the Golan Heights into Israel already and we're seeing the, the we're seeing the actual formation exactly what was prophesied in the book of Psalms chapter 83. So these are some of the crazy stuff. I mean, this is it's literally right off the pages of the Bible. And the next question is, does that mean we're going into Ezekiel 38 where other nations get involved, like the Russians and the Turks and others? Literally, the Taliban maybe from Afghanistan, uh, maybe Al Qaeda on behalf of Iraq. You know, does us? Uh, I mean, do we actually see? Uh, who knows? Even even China potentially. We've seen Russia and China been holding meetings. We see Russia and Hamas and uh, Iran holding war meetings. We we know that there's. Phone calls going on between there's a, there's and, and so there's a lot taking place, and then you know so I, and then, and we got the storm okay what about the site what about the the largest hurricane in history hit Mexico, and now the death toll is over a hundred in Mexico six hundred thousand without power, they're without infrastructure has been the infrastructure has really been hurt there's no food there's no water, so. Uh, there's chaos 
and then we had the wildfires burning out of control that nobody can understand what happened there in Maui, in Hawaii this year. And we could talk about the wildfires that burned across Canada all year. And these are just things coming off the top of my head that, that, um, that are happening. And so we're seeing, and then false prophets will rise. False prophets will rise. And they will deceive many. And there was a, 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 there was a pastor that just did a video saying that the rapture says, Jesus spoke to me. The rapture will be November the 6th. Okay, that's next Monday. Um, this obscure pastor. Well, the thing is, I wouldn't care about any of that. I mean, uh, to me, it just, you know, I mean, you know, there's been 244 prominent uh, religious leaders or pastors uh, uh, or theologians, prominent ones, who have predicted the rapture and have been wrong 244 times. Now, there's been a lot of other people just that you don't even hear about that say God said that this is going to be the rapture. What's on a date setting won't work because Jesus said no man knows the day nor the hour. No, not the angels in heaven. Not even the Son of God, but the only the Father, the Father only, okay? No one. Now, you can see the season. You can start identifying that the fig trees got its leaves are tender, and you know that the signs of the time are near. We can see the war raging right now between Israel and in Gaza and the armies gathering around. Jesus said, when you see, this is Luke 21, verse, uh, verse 20. Luke 21, 20 says, when you see the armies come past Jerusalem, know that the desolation thereof is nigh. So, you know that, but yeah, we have, we have, we have a, and what's amazing about this thing, which I wouldn't care, but the guy, this pastor says, Jesus spoke to me, the rapture will be November 6th. He declares himself a, a, uh, apostle, an evangelist, a pastor and a prophet. Okay, so he he called out four out of four out of the five um, ministry gifts. He says that, that he is one all four of those things. And then he said, the rapture. He said that Jesus spoke to him while he was sitting at a table, and that uh, Jesus told him that the rapture was next Monday, which happens to be Israel Hall's birthday, by the way, and it's National Saxophone Day. So Israel always loves that. But anyway, this pastor said that the rapture is going to happen next Monday, November the 6th. I wouldn't even give this the time of day, except he said, so go and sell everything you have. He told people now, he just told the people, go sell everything you got and give it to Paul Begley. He said, sell everything you got and give it to Pastor Paul Begley because he'll still be here. In other words, I, I I don't get to go in the rapture. So go ahead and sell everything and give it to Pastor Paul Begley. I mean, that's what he says in this uh, video. And I'm thinking, what? Because he won't get, he'll still be here. You know, he won't get to go. Um, so then I'm thinking, okay, is this guy making, is he mocking the offerings that people give to our ministry? Um, it's, it's. It's, uh, that's, you know, first of all, first of all, it's not good to ever set dates. I mean, that's, that's, that's just absolutely not going to work. But then to say, go ahead and tell everybody, go sell everything you got and give it to Pastor Paul Baker. Now, I know he had to have been, surely he was just, um, being sarcastic, but I don't know. I mean, there's so many things out there now. There's so many people saying so many things. Uh, it's insane. Um, uh, wow. 
and then you know i i when i watched it, i said well lord you know whatever and the lord said to me no 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 he's mocking the offerings he's mocking the people that give to the work of the lord he's mocking you but he's really not not mocking me he's mocking god and i said lord what 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 do i what do we do and he said the bible says mark them mark them that uh, would do these kinds of things in ministry. I don't ever, I, you know, look, we, we, don't, we don't attack any ministries. We don't do any of that kind of stuff. We just don't. I'm not even telling you the guy's name. I'm just saying that uh, you shouldn't mock. You shouldn't mock. People give their tithe and offerings. They give their tithe and offerings in this ministry because they love the Lord and they love winning souls and they love the work we do and they love the information we bring. Um, and uh, But the Bible said in the last days there would be uh, scoffers, mockers in the end times. Basically, and, and they mock, okay? They mock. So I said, God, what in the world, uh, you know, what do you want me to do? He says, just take up an offering. Since he's mocking the offerings, take up an offering. Take up an offering on November 6th. And uh, ask all the followers you have to just give something, no matter what it is. Just see how many people you actually have who support the work of the Lord. I already know we have the faithful the real, you know, the real faithful tithers and supporters every month. Some people are every week. Some people are every two weeks. Some people are every month. I already know. We know these people have been so faithful. But the Lord spoke to me and said, this man is mocking. This man is mocking the giving to the work of the Lord. He's mocking by setting dates, but he's more than that. He's mocking you as a Pastor Begley, but even more than that, He's mocking people's offering, their worship, because you worship the Lord with your offering. He's mocking all of us who are a part of winning souls to the body of Christ. And so, all right. So I said, okay, Lord, you want me to lift an offering on Monday, November 6th? And the Lord said, no, no, just lift an offering. Ask all of your followers to give something that day. And let's see just how many people there are out there. You can give whatever you want, but just see. Give whatever the Lord lays on your heart. Let's just see. God says to me, uh, these are not jokes. You don't joke around with stuff like this. And if you, uh, the, I, the link, if you want to go watch the video of yourself, folks, you can. I wonder how long he'll leave that up there. He'll he'll probably the comments below will probably be probably wear him out to the point that he'll have to just start deleting them and he won't leave them all there. He, there's no way. So anyway, I'll just leave that. No, I'm not going. I don't give out. I don't. I don't ever speak names. I don't, I just just I'm just saying. But he did call my name out. He did, and he and he threw it into this weird rapture prediction. And he made reference to the fact that I was going to be left behind. What? Get a cup of coffee. I can't be left behind. I just can't. Can I play a song, maybe? Are you serious? I think that might help. Robo Mom. Robo Mom, I don't want to be left behind. Tell him. So didn't Israel have a song, something like that? Israel Hall, didn't he have a song sort of like this? About being left behind? Oh, no. But how about this one? Can I play this song? No! Don't mock whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. And don't mock God, please. <laughs> 
can shake the sky come down the mountains all fall to the ground but I will fear none of those things shelter me Lord underneath your wings dark waters rise the thunder pounds the wheels of war are going round and all the walls are crumbling shelter me lord underneath your wings shelter me lord underneath your wings hide me underneath your wings hide me deep inside your Oh, yes. Shelter me, Lord, underneath your wings. Shelter me, Lord, underneath your wings. about it. We serve a good God. We really serve a good God. Tell them, Robo Mom, tell them. Wow, 
Wow, what a great song. What a great song. That's on our Journey album. Uh, someone's asking, did Yemen declare war on Israel? Well, effectively they did. They didn't say it, but they claimed that they attacked Israel. They fired dr- uh, missiles and drone attacks targeting Israel, targeting Tel Aviv. Um, and that's on, according to ABC News. Now, out of um, Middle East, uh, they're saying that the Houthis effectively cl- declared war on Israel after their drone and missile barrage hit Israel today. Um, so, uh, f- you know, did they come out and say it? They, they, what, I said, uh, tell me, they actually they hit the the town of Elat. The Iranian-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen have claimed responsibility for a series of attacks against the city of Elat today. It was done by uh, Yemen. So the question is, did they declare war? Well, you know, it's never good if somebody fires rockets at you and missiles at you. I would kind of, that is never good. And I'm not so sure that these guys want a piece of Israel. But, you know, Yemen's Houthi rebels was able to fire these rockets a thousand miles away and land them into the, the town of Elat. So uh, here we go, okay? You know, Israel's being condemned on every side, being shot at from every direction, and uh, and condemned by the United Nations. And, and it's it's just unbelievable, but, but it's not stopping them from their objective to crush Hamas, to end Hamas, and to put an end to their regime. And uh, while trying to free the hostages and trying to um, liberate, honestly, liberate the Palestinian people from the, from the oppressive reign and terror that Hamas has had over the Palestinian people. So really, the, 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 the Israel's actually the liberators here, trying to liberate them, trying not to hurt any of the civilians. Obviously, some are getting shot or hurt or, or uh, damaged because they're being used as human shields, but it's it's terrible, okay? It's terrible that that's happening, and Israel doesn't want it to happen. So it's a difficult, but when you're trying to get the hostages, now Israel was able to get one hostage, Got one hostage out there alive, and I don't know how in the world they did that. Um, but uh, you know, thank God. So we're, we're this is really uh, things are really heating up, and so we got this guy making a prediction that the rapture is going to be Monday, and that he's telling everybody that Jesus told him that the rapture is coming November sixth, Monday, November sixth, which is Israel Hall's birthday, by the way. Um, but. And he's telling everybody to sell everything they got and give it to Paul Begley. Give it, sell everything they got, he said, and give it all to Pastor Paul Begley because he'll still be here. And to me, what he was saying, and, and he was mocking, uh, he's mocking about the date of the rapture. Obviously, he's, you know, he's, he's uh, mocking me, which I don't care. He's mocking you and everyone else out there that supports publicly prophecy ministries. He's mocking your offering that you're giving to the Lord. Uh, that's not good. You know, you don't want to mock God. Um, you know, so, and then I got to think about it, you know, I mean, then the Bible did say that we would have these false prophets, false Christ and false prophets would come and they would deceive many. Um, yeah, it's wrong. Yeah, you're right. It's it's terrible. And and so I was reading here what it says in Matthew 24. Let's just look at this again because this is going to be happening more and more. And you're going to see it. They're going to make predictions like this and then they're going to they're going to do things that are, you know, um very very damaging to the body of Christ. So what he's saying is that Pastor Beckley is not going to get to go in the rapture. 
and he, so he's uh, mocking me. He's mocking my followers and supporters. He's mocking God. He's lying by saying that Jesus told him. He's declaring himself an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, and a pastor. So there's just a whole lot there. But I'll just read what it says in the Bible. It says, Jesus said, Take heed that no man deceive you. Matthew 24, verse 4. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. The end is not yet. Okay? And there's going to be these uh, nations that are against, against nations and kingdoms and kingdoms and famines and pestilence and earthquakes and all this. And there's going to be, this is just the beginning of sorrows. And then, of course, there's going to be persecution of Christians. They'll be delivered and they'll be afflicted. And they'll be hated of all nations. For my name's sake, Jesus said. And then he said, and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Okay. So now he said you're going to have false Christ. And then he says you're going to have false prophets. And then he says later in the same chapter, Matthew 24, for the third time, uh, he says uh, in verse 23, he says, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here, here is Christ, or, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and they shall show great signs and wonders, and so much if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So that's the third time in this one chapter that Jesus warns us of those that would be using the, you know, using the position, I guess, of spiritual authority or whatever to deceive people, whether they were saying they are Christ or whether they say they're um, false or, or they're saying they're prophets or whatever they're saying, making predictions of the rapture uh, is crazy to do. And it's what's even crazier is to say to the people, the rapture, he's, you know, make it, make a predict. Jesus told him that, uh, and his dogs were his witness. They had uh, two dogs. You, you, you'll see that if you watch the video. And he says that Jesus told him that the rapture is November the 6th and that everyone should sell everything they have, everything they've got, he said, and give it to Pastor Paul Begley because he'll still be here after the rapture. Um, God told me, take up an offering on that day. Miss E.D., you and Robo Mom and some of the other mods and some of you folks have been with me a long time. You remember back in the in the days when I used to get assaulted. I mean, I, I, they were they were attacking me from every direction. Do you remember that? And uh, some one time, and each every time they did that, I would take up an offering, and it drove them not. It drove it drove the enemy na and na absolutely crazy. And uh, you know, uh, people would just. We just say, yeah, we're standing with you, and they just send in an offering, and then uh, we would it would draw it drove the enemy absolutely insane. It drove the devil so crazy that he kind of just backed off because he said he couldn't do anything with us. And now here he is again, coming back with the same thing, attacking again um, God's people, and this time attacking Pastor Paul, attacking you and your offerings to the ministry, and attacking. Just coming up with some rapture prediction. I'm just, somebody check it. Pray. Pray for this man, okay? Everybody, just pray for this guy. Because it's, uh, it's just strange. Anyway, guys, tonight in the dark, in the dark, get your Halloween tickets right now. You can go to our website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. Heidi and uh, has done such a phenomenal job, and I really want you guys to see this. This, uh, this pres these these five presentations, uh, information you will be absolutely blown away by uh, um, just by all of it. Really, I mean, it's really good stuff, and it will help help you understand. Why this day, why this evening is so dark 
and uh, so satanic. And I remember Russ Dizdar telling me, this is the, the today, he said, Halloween evening, Halloween, more people are sacrificed, more people are murdered, more people are slaughtered on this day than any other day of the year. It is the highest satanic day of the year. So be careful out there, okay? Be careful out there. And uh, and plead the blood of Jesus. Read Psalms 91. Pray it over your family. Pray it over your children. Pray it over your grandchildren. There's, uh, there's more children are abducted and stolen on this night than any other night of the year. You know? So... Be careful. And then with this fentanyl, I'm just going to say it, with this fentanyl floating around, you can't trust the candy that is going to be given out because you got to know somewhere in all of that there are people who would poison and kill little kids with fentanyl, put it in the candy. I, I, there's, there's Hamas is, look, these these terrorists are everywhere now in this country. They really, really are. So, anyway, you can check the uh, down below on the descriptions on this uh, video. You can uh, you'll see the link to get your tickets. You can see the link to see the rapture prediction. You can see all the links of everything that's going on. God bless you guys. I'll be back. The webinar starts at six o'clock. We'll be sending all the uh, all the links. For this webinar at 6 o'clock. There you go. The Jews went into the ghettos in the concentration camps. October 31st, 1939. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, guys. I'll be back. Pray. Pray about everything. Pray because we're in the, yes, we are in the last days. Yeah, Second Peter chapter 3. That's where it talks about the scoffers and the mockers. You're exactly right, Rick. Thank you. God bless, guys.